Hey guys, I'm with John Delaney here, who is a Jim's Mowing Franchisee, and I think you've just come up to seven months, so it's a great time to um, check in with you and see how you're doing. So thanks for coming out to the head office today, John, and doing this. No, thanks very much. No worries. So did, we always, when we do this, we ask, what was your background prior to joining Jim's? What were you doing before Jim's Mowing? Yeah, so um, my background before Jim's Mowing, I was in a managing director's role uh, for the last five years, and GM role before that. Uh, I'm spending about four and a half Four and a half, five months a year offshore, living offshore in between Australia and uh, spent a lot of time in the US, Europe, Asia. Mm. And uh, yeah, that was what I'd done before that. Primarily, I'm a butcher by trade, multiple family, about fifth generation in the meat industry and agricultural industry. And um, so I've always been outside generally a lot, um, as well as, you know, wherever I could be. And then decided last year, pre-COVID, I'd sort of had enough. I'd got to where I'd got to, achieved everything I wanted to achieve. And decided it was sort of maybe time to slow down a little bit and uh, want to spend more time at home. Mm. Now so. you, you sort of, you said there's some GM roles, so just, you're pretty big, pretty big GM roles, though. midfield meets, you're a good southwest boy from Warnable, that sort of way, so pretty pretty high up there roles. Yeah, I was um, in part of in, there, I was in charge of the retail mm. uh, division there, and then I came back to Melbourne and was in GM roles in um, in meat industry um, type, type to related businesses. And the last role was, uh, I was asked to set up a new um, business in Australia and build it from ground up. Um, so my goal was to take that from zero to 10 million within five years and we took it from zero to 20 million in four years. Wow. And um, I got to that stage then that, um, yeah, I, I just achieved all that and I just wanted to spend more time at home. Mm. So, yeah. So what made you, so you're looking around to make a change. You would have, I presume someone of your stature would have looked at a lot of different things and had a lot of options. So what made you you know, choose Jim's mowing? Um, yeah, look, what made me choose Jim's mowing was um, I, I wanted to do, I, I really wanted to slow down. And everyone defines slowing down as differently. To me, slowing down was actually waking up and waking up and going to bed in, in the same bed every day. That was, that was my definition of slowing down. So I'd always been used to working 50, 60 plus hours a week. That was just normal. So my definition was to be home every night. That's my definition of slowing down, mm. um, which is different for everyone, but that's my definition. So um, that being the case then, I knew there was a lot of opportunities um, to look at. I looked at different franchises, different uh, things. The flexibility to me um, was irrelevant because I thought, you know, it, that that sort of didn't really motivate me, the flexibility side of it, because mm. I'm a big believer. You, you only get out what you get in, so they put in. So um, the gyms brand then attracted me and... I just I just liked everything about it. I liked the process. I liked the systems. Um, did look at a couple of other franchise opportunities besides gyms. I actually at the time I looked at Leonard's Poultry um, because they have yeah. an industry background and looked at a couple of other food opportunities. But I didn't like my destiny being controlled by the likes of Westfields and people like that and other mm. bits and pieces. Too many variables, uh, which are un- out of control. Now, did um, you do a trial day before becoming a franchisee, or how did you go through? Yeah, I done a I done over a month. Um, so I done over a month. So I done some done some time with some very experienced guys, um, different guys, and then um, I done a few Saturdays working with guys um, to get some experience there. Mm. And then I actually, my wife and I, um, we we had a few properties, and we intentionally then chose gyms to come out and do different works, chose different franchisees, and we would never get the same franchisees. We'd book them as onces to see what the service levels were like for different franchisees and see the processes. We used window cleaning, maintenance, dog grooming and washing, and all those sorts of ones. And we'd done that. I was always interested and was always going to do the gardening side of it. Mm. Um, but we'd done all of them. Um, and the gardening one, we had four different guys come out because I wanted to see what the level was and the standard of mm. different people to actually understand where I would need to benchmark myself against. I've never ever heard that before. So I want to, I want to go and talk a little bit about that. So what did you find from your from your investigations or from your research, your market research from that angle? Um, yeah, well, first of all, the biggest thing um, what we done was um, when we when we had a couple of guys come out, um, uh, was very one of the biggest things for me, it sounds, might sound a bit harsh, I got my wife, my wife done a lot of the talkings. I wanted to see if they tried to... How, if, how they dealt with that when I took a backward step that mm. she was the more dominant one in the situation mm. um, I thought that was a good test 
and um, we thought that because we just want to understand how that worked because quite often a lot of people think of the husband and wife see they just naturally would talk to the male i know what you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure um that was probably one of the big things um the other big things was appearance so they were sort of some of the little things that we were just looking at we we're just trying to understand the process and and then to be honest the other thing was the quoting we had like type services at different properties and then we were comparing the quotes and all that to understand how that sort of side of it worked as well mm. just just different things so you've done a pretty big investigation period you've had multiple franchisees come out to see the process you've also been out with yeah. franchisees yourself yeah now you did the training as well so what what made you come and then do the training after having all this experience um well i'd done the training online oh, okay i was one of the online training yeah. people um so i heard uh, a few got from what i understand some people didn't uh, struggle with the online training mm. um i think the, the part for me, probably why I didn't struggle with the online training was because I had the, probably the business acumen component behind me mm. from a past roles of having to understand that side of it. Um, to be perfectly honest, I really love the, the online training part of it because I like the backwards and forwards part where you could rerun yeah. something, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then there was a lot of key components that we I picked up on the online training, which was a replica of the training because it was being video. Yeah that we made notes of and then made them a priority before we started mm. to put those measures in place. Yeah, I think the training now, we've made a live stream. So yeah. the course, I think that the course you're talking about is like a university style course where you can come and go at your own pace. Yeah. But I think now we've got it live stream or in person yeah. for the meeting on the state. But um, so what made you still come across? Because you've done a massive, in, like I've, I want to go back to that point again, but you've never, you've done a massive investigation process, but you still ended up going ahead with gyms. Yeah. What, why was that? Um, because the, the biggest thing for me was that um, the systems were there. Uh, number one was the systems. And number two was um, there's no such thing as a cold lead. Mm. So when you're looking for chasing for business or getting business, the leads are all hot because someone's gone and made the effort to contact via online or phone inquiry. That takes effort, so it's premeditated. So there's actually a, a need. So Jim's has done all their part. They can't do anything else. Mm. They've got got it to that stage, and then I'm a big believer. You've got you've probably got 180 seconds whether you've won the job or not, and that's how I work it, because you've got to find common ground. And I think it's I sort of say that elevator speech technology. If you to go between the first floor and the 40th floor, you've probably got it not 90 seconds to 180 seconds. So that first 180 seconds, when you pull up at that person's house, from they see how you pull up to how you act to how you acknowledge them, how you intimidate them or you know listen to them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. You've got it then. It then becomes price. Mm. Um, so I think the price is like this much of it. The other part, the other component, the other 90% of it, it that's what I find. That's for me personally. Mm. So. Now let's talk about your first six months. You've just you've done over six months, so yeah. which is um which is a, which is always good to touch base with someone after six months because the first year of business is you know, going to be the toughest yeah. regards being a franchise or your independent business. Yeah. So how has your first six months gone overall? Um, overall, really, really good, um, really rewarding. Um, I've done three splits. Now let's touch on a split because people watching might just like go, what what is a split? It's not a banana split. So what is what yeah. is the split? Um, so a split is a sale off of um, a proportion of your clients, uh, a certain amount of clients that you wanted to sell off and consolidate and things like that. So in the or, first six months, you've been able to build up three essentially runs and sell off clients yeah. to other people. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we sell off three different splits in three different areas. So, yeah. Did you know that was possible? What was this sort of... Because that's, for me, because I've been working here for a while, I know yeah. most people might do a split after one or two years and you've done three within six months, which is quite an amazing achievement. Yeah, I was very confident that... Um, well, well, everything that I've seen was very confident and the guys who I got to spend with... I was very lucky I got to spend time with some pretty, really good operators, mm. like in the field. Um, and that being the case, then I, I knew everything was there. The only thing that could make it fail was me. Mm. So it was how I went about it and my attitude, I guess. That, to me, it's all about attitude. So, yeah. Do you recall your first couple of weeks and what they were like? I recall my first day. Right. Um, okay. Aaron Harrison's my franchisor. Yeah. And, um, and John Wiles is quite a good friend and mm. also a neighbour. And, you know, it was Monday the 23rd of November uh, last year and absolutely torrential rain. Torrential rain. I couldn't get out of the house. And... It was torrential, and Aaron goes, "Great first day." I said, "Yeah, I know." And um, but out of a negative, this is where it was quite funny. At two p.m. that day, this I never forget it. The suns came out, and it stopped raining. And I'd had jobs to do that day. I already knew that I'd done. I was able to get two or three jobs in. 
So when I got home, John rang me and goes, how'd you go? And I said, well, I've got, those, I've got three jobs in. He goes, well, that's better than nothing. I said, I said, it's phenomenal. And he goes, and I think he sort of went quiet maybe a bit because I was pretty happy about it. But I'd actually covered the costs that were allocated for the day plus made 60 bucks profit. Mm. So that's day one. So from that day forward, I've never been a negative. So that was my attitude. I know I worked out um, reverse engineered when I went into this, reverse engineered for profit, not for sale, because I was never going to come into this to sell the business. So, you know, it's a bit like golf. You drive for show, you putt for dough. So I started from the bottom and went to the top and then made the sales and the revenue the last thing and worked on the other areas first. I found that a much better model for me. So that being the case then, it's, I've always followed that strategy and it's worked really well for me. I love hearing that term because a lot of people talk in terms of gross revenue or oh, I turn over this, I turn over yeah. this. But as you said, you you reverse engineer from profit from day one. Okay, maybe do you want Correct. to talk about that a little bit more in detail for any for any current franchisees or for people wondering more about yeah. the process with yeah. that? Yeah, so so when you, a lot of people talk about, oh, look, um, I've done, they may, you might hear a statement, I've done $7,000 turnover this week, mm. okay. But if you took out $2,500 worth of material costs, that's why I don't. I don't. I'm not interested in turnover because I don't. When I, if someone, if I was to, if you asked me about a job today, I could tell you we done this turnover. But if I take all those costs out of the actual cost of the job, it comes back to this. So why I started at the bottom was when when we went into it, um, I really wanted to know my costs. So I knew my costs 100% right down to every iota. Mm. So much so I've even got a budgeted annual figure for leads that I yep. put aside. Uh, and then by doing it that way, it all seems to work well together, you know, to yeah. work married up. So we engineered from the bottom up because the most important thing is knowing your costs and knowing that no matter what you turn over on the top line, 10% of that's not yours, it's the government's yeah. in GST. So all those sorts of things, I wanted to make sure we were spot on. And staff, like, you know, I, I have a gentleman work with me, but the reality is whatever your staff member's hourly rate, you've got to multiply it by 1.42, and that's your real cost mm. with superannuation, long service leave, all those sorts of things. So we built a model that if we couldn't afford to pay a worker with all those costs, we shouldn't have a worker. Mm. So that's been the strategy. So to engineer up, and that's been a very successful model. I think you talked about previously you did three splits in the first six months. Now, how are you able to, to do that so quickly? Well, the op- because of the opportunity with gyms, I just turned the leads on. All right. Yeah, turned the leads on. And I think it was the second or third week, I actually asked um, my franchisor, Aaron, um, I asked him to take me off income guarantee because I found it a hindrance. Now, we'll just touch on that. So paperwork guarantee, when you first start as a franchisee, you get more priority in terms of leads than other, other people have been around for a while to help you get going and build your business. So. Yeah. You turn that off straight, up, straight away. Yeah, I did because yeah. you can't control the, the postcode and geographical spread where those leads come to help support you. Mm. So it's like a shotgun going off and it's fantastic. There's heaps of work, there's heaps of leads, but I didn't want that. I wanted to, to grow because I was focused on bottom line focus, not top line focus. It was better for me to do that. And all about bottom line focus is controlling cost mm. and controlling all those sorts of things. So that was a better strategy for me. When I'd done that, the business grew even quicker and then um, that's what allowed me to do the splits. And that's because you don't, you know, for anyone, for anyone watching or listening, is that you didn't want to be driving from here to here to here to here, back and forth. And Th- that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you want to talk about, so you've got your round basically condensed where you might, let's say, three or four jobs in the same street or that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like today, we done um, we, we done close to 20 jobs before I got here today for between 7 p.m., uh, 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. Because mm. we got, they were all in a tight cluster, two of us. Um, and a lot of mowing and just they were just mowing and edging jobs and everything because I was planning the day around this. And between seven and two, we'd done 20 jobs. Which is quite incredible. 20 jobs is a lot. And yeah. if you went, let's say if you went to five or four, if you if you needed to, like you can, you can do the math in terms of your head on how, many, how much work you're doing, That's which right. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But you put that down to getting that run really condensed from an early on and then obviously scheduling the jobs which require, let's say, less less work or something on that day or... Yeah, correct. Yeah. And we quote accordingly. So when, when I do our quoting, if we've got jobs in a clustered area and we know that it's going to be very beneficial for us, we won't go quoting a job. But like someone else might say, oh, I wouldn't have done it for that. I would have charged $10 more. We won't do that. Like I'll quote accordingly because I've got a cluster. So I quote that we're going to, you know, not we're not too cheap. We just quote that we've got on a good job and mm. the price is fair and there'll be never a discussion or a discrepancy on the price and people feel comfortable with that because 
to me, that's a, that's how that works better for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but that works better for me. Yeah, so you really maximise your root efficiency, haven't you? 100%. Yeah. So yeah. What, what's your typical root like now then in terms of efficiency? Is it something where you have, let's say, five or six streets lined up where you have those multiples? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So um, most of the most of the days now um, are really, really tight. We've got um, that tight clustered area and it, it works really, really well for us. Um, what we also done, when I bought two splits too, um, the, when you buy my couple of splits, I bought two splits together, made a total of uh, 50 clients at the time. And some of the splits, the two splits had customers very close within half a K, one K, et cetera, et cetera, but at entirely different cycles. So I thought, well, how am I gonna do this? I needed to get a lot from that were three weekly. I needed to bring them all forward. Yet you had to do it delicately that you weren't trying to bring them forward without upsetting them. So what I decided to do was, okay, well, I'll take a commercial hit and let's say it was a $66 Moa GST, I said to them, because of, I said, I was quite open, I said, I've consolidated two runs, I need to service you better and to con- and to be able to do things more streamlined, I need to bring your Mo back one week and to get it in line, but I'm not gonna charge you extra, I'm actually only gonna charge you $44, which is at 30, 66% of the other cost, yeah. so you're not paying more, and then they were all, oh, that's fantastic, no worries at all. So that's how I got everyone back aligned. Mm. So you're giving so, a discount and you sort of in, in communication Just for that one well. mode, yeah. yeah. But it was only on the ones I had to bring back. The ones I had to push out, that was easy because mm. I could push them out without a week, without any drama. But it was only the ones I had to bring back. They so, were the more delicate ones. So do you think having that root, that just relentless, let's say, commitment to root efficiency in the early yeah. days has allowed you to do those so many splits in so quick of time? Or? Yeah, I think so. Um, ongoing, yeah, that was definitely it. Um, but the biggest thing was um, the, the actual... I wouldn't have been able to do it with if the, the work wasn't there. And... The other reason why we grew the business so much was I have my leads on from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m., seven days a week. Yeah. I have the maximum window. Um, I also found then that um, I would do 99% of the quotes same day. And because I started in summer, in daylight savings, I had the opportunity, it wasn't late, dark to late o'clock. So we'd work all day, I'd have a quick bite for dinner, I'd go out and quote till 7.30 every mm-hmm. night, eight o'clock, if that's what it took. Now with that, are you down for same day service or? No. No, but you, did you find going out there just getting that routine obviously helped you and pra- improves your skills as well, you know, becoming a better quoter as you go? Yeah, it does. Um, the thing for me with the quoting, um, well, the lead, because the lead's a hot lead, as mm. I said, so the quicker you get there, the, that that's sort of more responsive time, and I wanted to do that to consolidate, to build things up, to be able to do the splits. So your same day quote generally or the next yeah, day? Every day. Every day? Yeah, every day. Fantastic. Yeah. So do you think that that would help other franchisees or other people, let's say, in general? Mm with their business, like rather than putting it off, they just go out there every day, same, much as they can, quick as they can. Yeah, well I actually, to be honest, the person who I learned that off was actually watching videos and that was Dan Cahill. Dan, yep. Dan boasted, the promoted himself, the fact that his biggest strike rates were for speed mm. of quoting, um, the quicker the quicker you answer, etc. And it's a big thing on the video, Jim, Jim says that, how quick you respond. So what I do is, um, I do it differently. Anyone who inquires online, I have an automated text set up in notes yep. and I send them a text message and say hi Jonathan from Jim's just got your online inquiry is it okay if I call you within the next 15 minutes to half an hour regarding you mm. and the reason I do that is they're they're an online person so I generally see if something comes online I find that those people may not like to talk to people as much as someone who rings the call center so then I do it that way to me that's a good strategy very clever so what's the response generally from customers when you send that oh within seconds because yeah. they're, they're, they're banging them out yeah yeah that's yeah. fantastic that's so, a really good tip actually yeah yeah i haven't had um, that one before yeah so then yeah that, that works for me for uh, really well for me so. now now with your um it's great to hear you mentioned some content and that's what you do and you do it a bit differently as well but i was going to say what, what equipment are you using in your in your business currently? um currently i'm using honda honda um, mowers and shindower yeah um but it's funny, it's a quick time you ask this question. Mm. Um, next Friday, my truck goes in um, off the road to be fully fitted out with solar. Um, solar and I'm swapping across to uh, lithium power. To really? Battery power. So, yeah. so, so you, do you have a truck, do you? I have a built-in, yeah, I have a, 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 a ute that's built, custom-built ute. I don't tow a trailer. Ah, okay, so, so you have the ute with the big the trailer thing on the back. I think I've seen this. That, yeah, Malcolm built it for ah, me. Ah, yeah, yeah. So that's mine. Yeah, it's yeah. a top class. It's a Got a lot of a lot of heat online that one. That was a good one. A lot yeah. of people very popular. Yeah, that, done that the graphic. And we, yeah, and I sort of graphicked it all up and How all did you, sorts of things. Do you so. find it helps as well for your efficiency of your business just having that as opposed to the trailer? Or um, it did when I was doing a lot of work in Malvern and Brighton and all those lots of areas, yeah. narrow streets and things like that. But yeah, we do look. We we reckon it saves us about twenty minutes, thirty minutes a day. Really, that, for us personally, yeah. um, that. 
guys can a lot of guys can dance the trailer around like it's nothing but i'd probably be too slow like i've got a trailer as well mm. but i find that the ute's quite good it holds i think 3.1 cubic meters in the back so it holds more than enough for us for what we need and uh, works well now what battery powered equipment are you going to what's the brand went to ego ego uh, to yep. be honest yeah um looked at a couple of brands um the only the other, there's an, another uh, Palenque or Palenque is Palenque, really yeah. good, yeah. Um, really good for the battery life and all those sorts of things. Um, I didn't like it because it was too much backpack stuff. Battery, I wanted the battery mm. on the tool, and I like that sort of stuff. And um, Ego's been around a long time, and there's a lot of options if anything goes wrong. Mm. That there's not one for me. There's not a limit of access to. Yeah, whereas with Palenque, Palenque's a, is a very high quality product, but it's yeah. a, from France and it could take a while if there's anything. Yeah, there. correct. So I know the guys um, who are selling it. They carry lots of spares and everything's relatively quick. But mm. um, the, also the the mower shop I've also dealt with predominantly. Um, he sells Ego, and he's he's just he's been over backwards to support me. So I've mm. just sort of yeah. Now with, with now with your trailer, so it's literally going to have solar panels on the top. So when you drive around, it's going to charge the batteries inside, and you just grab a battery if it's flat, and you yeah. chuck it on. And so on top of the um, on top of the um, mower box part, um, yeah. we've got a solar panel. The sol that'll be all solar panel, and then yeah, we've got the um, I think it's two thousand watt or something lithium and charger, and that's going all built into that, and then yeah, we can charge everything as we go. So now I didn't want to touch on it before, but I don't want to get specific dollar amounts but how is your income like now compared to previously when you're pretty high up in your GM roles and things like that um, yeah look it's a good question you can quite openly <laughs> ask it um, so like I said before um, from a comparative point of view to the role I was there's no comparison because you can't mm. at that level as in a 20 million dollar business global role no comparison yeah, I understand yeah. <laughs> but in saying that um, in saying that if I take out the splits um if I take out the splits um, in the first seven months um, turnover, excluding materials, because I mm. don't, like I said, I don't count. It was one hundred and thirty-nine thousand. Jeez, that's a good good yeah. wicket. Yeah, but with the base operating profit of uh, seventy-nine and a half. Wow, that's really. And you happy with that, obviously? Or well, that's you... after I took wages as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's post wages. After well. post wages, yeah, yeah. So go. that's because that's profit. So that's net profit. Mm. I run a system. I run it as a PTY limited. So. Um, I actually, uh, when we first started, uh, um, there's in, there's a, 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 on the gym's training, there's um, one thing that stuck in my head was for less than a cup of coffee a day, mm. you'll have no, st you, you could really have all your bookkeeping and accounting done properly. That's, that never forgot that. So I hired, um, I then partnered with uh, Dean O'Brien, who's a franchise. Yeah, bookkeeping, yeah. Yeah, he looks after all my finance bookkeeping. Yeah. And when we started when i started with dean um that's when i think we went to the next level pretty quickly yeah i think a lot of people on the start they go i'll give it a crack first and 12 months later they try and get it involved and there's always sometimes a mess to clean up or whatever so yeah well, well it's really good like as an example if i was driving here and i filled up with petrol mm -hmm. um i just get the receipt shoot it into dext on my knee yeah hit vehicle fuel Bang mm. goes through all set up in the system. I screw the invoice straight in the bin, done, <laughs> and it's all goes straight into the, the, the GL uh, GL coding and ledgers and all that sort of stuff. So that that was a really really good attribute for us. That that worked well for us. Mm. So yeah. Um, so mm. now with the income, guys, I just make a note for anyone listening or watching. We don't, you know, with income, people quote figures and stuff. So that's only that's solely what you're earning, and that's what um yep. Jonathan's doing. But it's up to you guys if you are doing a franchise. You know, that's that's what you can achieve. But that's. That's up to you guys. It's no guarantee that you'll make that. It's just up to up to you what you can what you can do in the business. Now let's talk about your franchise or support. So franchise or is, is a support person for your you know your go to business coach. You're pretty lucky. You John Wilds as well as a trainer, as your neighbour as well yeah. to go to. So pretty lucky there. Yeah. But um, John's a great fellow. But how is how is your franchise or support and what is what does your franchise or do for you? Um, yeah, look, I've been lucky. Um, like I said, Aaron Harrison's mm -hmm. my franchise or. Um, when I first started, I actually was um, I send, was sending him my P and Ls, and actually asked him to go through them and find faults where I could improve. Mm. Now that's the trust I have in him. So um, I asked him to go through my figures and say, "Can you look through these and look for faults to see if there's any areas where you think I can be doing better and things yeah. like that?" Um, can pick up the phone anytime, um, never an issue, and yeah. But that, attitude, really but, helpful. but that attitude you said was fantastic, but how can I do better, right? And I know from the gym's training, that's always what gym... There's one point people take away from the training, you know, how can you do something better every day? And mm. From what you're saying regarding your business, it's something you really do apply to yourself every day, isn't it? How, do you, how can I do something better? Is there yeah. a cost I could do here or something I can make better? And yeah. So maybe you want to give a couple of examples of what you've looked at 
from when you started and what you've changed to now in regards to your business? Um, yeah, look, one of the biggest um, one, one of the biggest changes I'd have to say was um, equipment's the biggest one. Um, right. That's been the biggest one to move across to. I'm I'm getting old, so I'm 52. It's not old, but you're getting older, so you've got to start thinking about uh, preservation long, longer term. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought going to the lithium equipment and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to give it a go. Just, just it's a lot better, and the it's the spares as well. Like you know, there's a lot of incidental cost with the fuel uh, gear. Yeah. There's certain times where you know I've personally found that the the opportunity to go that way is a, a good opportunity longer term. Um, the other big thing for me was um, just t- touching things twice. I felt that we were touching things twice too much. So um, it was very process driven. So um, I felt there's a couple of times where I, we would do something and I. Th- we touched it two or three times. Now, the same thing. So you, you're going to lose money. You, it's not efficient. So yeah. we then tried to just get get smarter on how we work those processes and to avoid those sorts of things. Like even when you work on a job and you put equipment down, we've got to a stage now that when we get to a job, it's right, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, this is the central point where all the equipment's going to go. You touch it, you put it back there. So at the end of the day, we're not scattering everywhere, trying to lose things, pick things up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, it just, it just those sorts of things were quite and set the truck up the way the truck was set up, um, mm. little things like that, like having all the pre pre stuff done with um, line cut pre cut lines, where the PPE all goes, um, all those sorts of things. And how what's the most um, amount of work you've done in a day so far? Many jobs you mentioned twenty before for today. But um, yeah, the, the most jobs just mowing. Yeah. We we probably do about with the most we've done in one day mowing was about twenty nine jobs, Gee, and that's a mixture of mows from say forty dollars to you know forty dollars up to one hundred and ten dollar mows. I said, but that's two of us. Mm. So, but that's going. We don't we don't stop for lunch. We don't do that. We eat we eat in between jobs. So we like to go in and get it, get the job done, and get home. That's just how we operate, you know. Yeah. If we want to stop, we'll stop, but we don't generally. We we like to work that way. Where have you, where where did you develop this sort of discipline and this mentality? Because it's quite impressive, like you know, and it's not not a common thing, I don't think. But where did you get this from? Is it from your previous career, you reckon, or is it from being a good old country boy from the? Oh, uh, probably. The I think yeah. Look, coming from a, a farming type, well, family background, and um, coming from meat industry background, mm-hmm. um, times money. And um, we were brought up that there is no tomorrow, sort of thing. Mm. That's how we were brought up. So um, my dad, they were just as how the, that was the way it was. He goes, there is no tomorrow. Mm. You know, you wait till tomorrow, you you've been missed another opportunity type thing. So that's just how we were brought up. So I don't know, I, I don't know any different. You mm. know what I mean? So yeah. No, it's reflective in your business and just from hearing what you put in place is, is very, very impressive. Now, what about your customer? You've mentioned a little bit about customer service at the start, but what do you do from your customer service point of view? Is there anything you differently you, th- you might have do? You mentioned something about the text message before for yeah. online leads, which is very clever. Yeah. Is there anything you do from a customer service point of view or what do you like to do with your customer base? Um, just very big on the detail, like um, taking customers through the detail and uh, things like that. Um, when we do with customers, we the biggest thing is... Um, What's important to you? That's the, that's the first question I always ask is what's important to you? Because you see, when we had got some people come and quote, oh, we do this, we do that, no one asked me what was important to me. Right. So I find that if you say to a customer, look, what's most important to you? Mm. Um, and that's what, so, so we understand what's the most important things to you because you can go in and quote a job and then they go, oh, that's way too expensive. But that's because you weren't actively listening and they actually didn't want all that stuff done. They said that's what it'd be like later on. Um, but it's it's understand what's important to you. And that's your first question when you go out there into quiet. You see, introduce yourself and you say you say that phrase, do you? Yeah, I, I just yeah, say it. I'll say you know I'll, I'll, I'll say it, someone I'll, I'll you know say you know great to meet you. And I say so you know what how would you like us to help you know what what's the most important thing you want me to achieve what do you want to achieve with this and what, then are you, what are you trying to achieve and then by saying that they just go blah 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 and, and then you tailor it, obviously what yeah what, what you can do to that that's a fantastic way of looking yeah. i'm gonna we're gonna back that one up now what about the brand itself do you find the brand allows you let's say more more opportunity like how's the brand impacted your business in regards to winning clients or this sort of stuff um i think the brand's very 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 strong. I think the brand's um, the brand's been a big success for us to a certain extent. Um, one thing we well, I really pride ourselves on, and I make it important, and I tell the guys when they're working with me, if we mow on an nature strip and someone starts walking towards you, as soon as they're within ten meters, turn the mower off mm. and stop, and just wave and say hello. 
because they get automatic respect that you've respected the fact that they're walking on the footpath, etc., etc., etc. And then, and I said, always small, small, always, even if you're on, the, whenever you're on the phone, talk with a smile because it reflects in your tone. Mm. And then people think you're more presentable, you know, uh, more more personable and more um, approachable. And we find that that attitude of um, doing those little things when people are walking past or this or that and the other, it, it, we get a lot. We just get a lot more rapport, build mm. a lot more rapport, even if it's with your own customer when they see you. Oh, that's fantastic. Great, a bit of advice of that tip as well. Now, I want to talk about the leads. You mentioned leads before. Are leads, yep. Were you surprised about how many leads we get or how many there are available and the quality of the leads? Um, I was. Um, I wasn't shocked at how many there was because mm. I, that was. I, I knew that from like with John yep. and then with other guys. Um, I wasn't shocked about that at all. Uh, but it was just more so making sure that you don't lose an opportunity. Mm. Yeah, I have a big issue with the fact that you pay for the lead, whether you get it or not. So mm. I want my I want my cut. If I put down for the lead, I'm getting that lead. Yeah. So I'm going to do everything I can because it's then my responsibility. So I take ownership of it because mm. I pay for it. So it sound, that's a big motivator for me to make sure that I've exhausted every avenue and opportunity to the best of my ability to convert that lead. Mm. And there is leads where I've quoted high because I don't want the job. Mm. You can tell it's a nightmare, and you, everything about it's wrong. There's going to be an issue, mm-hmm. and I will quote higher, or I or I walk away. Yeah. I, I learnt to walk away very immediately. One of the splits of the guys I bought off, mm. he told me from day one, walk away. If it's if if you got any doubt, walk away. Mm. And and that's what I've done, and that's been very successful for me. For sure. Now I want to talk about now the. Um Winter time, spring coming into there. What are you yeah. What are you advising your clients coming into spring, or what do you do in winter as well? With your um, yeah, we've done a promotion. Um, I actually am a big fan and advocate of the gyms online, gyms jobs. Yeah, um, it's got a very very C- a strong CRM tool function to it as a as a as a, a, a process, and by targeting um, customers like with that, we sold um, over a hundred cubic meters of mulching. Through, through winter. Yeah, so maybe do you want to talk about what did you do? Did you do an EDM newsletter or what did you do? Um, yeah, just out, straight out targeted via email and yep. just, um, yeah, we call it like, you know, like Christmas in July? Sure. We call it mulching in July. <laughs> and and yeah. it went through for us and it worked really, really well. So, um, and, and that's out of Jim's jobs. Jim's jobs, yeah. Which is, so which... I used that because it was easy to, yeah. to get the message out. And then um, off the back of that, we got a lot of pruning, a lot of gardening work, a lot of, a lot of other cleanup work and stuff like that. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, what about your lifestyle now? So you've had some pretty high up jobs, traveling your and yeah, live it, doing the business style life. But what's your lifestyle like now? Um, yeah, look, I've become more of the Mr. Mum, I guess. My wife's quite high up in the bank, CBA, uh, Commonwealth Bank. So um, both were in very big roles. So now I'm sort of the one who's home earlier, cooks mm. dinner, all those sorts of things. You know, well, it's quite. I, I actually really enjoy it. So plus doing a full day though. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, still doing a full day, yeah. but it's really, really good. Like I just enjoy it. You know, I've gotten very efficient in the sense of now. 99% of the days, finish the job, invoice the job before we go to the next job Yeah. in the car, on the go. Um, so um, so those sorts of things, by the time I get home, I haven't got much to do. Is um, it, is so. it, did it live up to your expectations or was it more? Or did it exceed them the buying the business? Or? Uh, it's probably exceeded them, yeah. to be honest. Um, yeah, exceeded them. In what so, ways did it exceed them? Uh, just, oh, just the quality of the just the quality of your lifestyle yeah. and, and the flexibility. And the best part, the thing I love the most about this business compared to what my previous businesses have been is all my previous businesses have been Pareto, Pareto based businesses where um, 80% of your revenue is from 20% of your customers. Okay. This is a Pareto principal business in this business that doesn't work that way. So your your risk, business risk is, is minute mm. because your uh, revenue is so widely spread. So, so that's a great feeling. Mm. That's one good thing. And do you think you're, you're back... You've obviously really... Like, the one thing that comes from me is you've, you've applied your previous career learnings and you've just applied it to this mining business and going great guns. And I presume there's a lot of corporate people might be thinking the same thing. How does this work for me? So do you find, obviously, you know, that's obviously helped you a lot in, in what you do? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's another gentleman who recently joined um, a few months ago named Steve. Um, he's in... Yeah, I met him, yeah. Yeah, he's the nice same background as me and he's mm. been very successful. 
Mm. He's, he's been, been very successful in a short time and building a really solid business. Now, I mentioned well, lifestyle, but, but do you find yourself, is it just more, like, you're more happier? Like, what's the what's the comparison? I'm just trying to get people to get um, a sense of the lifestyle, like, in terms of your mood. Yeah, or it's your, probably the mental, from my point of view, stuff, mental yeah. health, like, the mental yeah. stress of it all previously. You, you, a lot, a lot of responsibility, a um, lot, lot of accountability, um, but more so... Um, no late-night emails either or phone you, calls. No, you, you don't take it home as much. Like, this job stops. Generally, this job really does... It's the closest I've ever had to a job that really does stop when you pull in the driveway. I love that quote because that's a that's a big thing. Obviously, people with a nine to five, but we all know that it's not nine to five. Yeah, you might get an email at seven, you have to respond to or ten o'clock yeah. or whatever it is. So, you're you're saying that once you get home, it's it's stopped for the day. Yeah, yeah. except for leads. Except for leads, leads a lead inquiry. The job the job does stop mentally. It does yeah. stop. It does it doesn't keep coming at you, sort of thing. So, yes. and the overheads are so low. Yeah. Um, it, the overheads are such a low part of the business. Now, mentally, do you find yourself more free to then do other things? Like in regards to you're not thinking about something all the time, you can be more, let's say, more present in other things? or how do uh, you... Yeah, a lot more present. So, yeah. yeah. What, do you, do, what do you do outside of work then? Uh, do a lot of uh, bike riding, cycling. Yeah. Just do a lot of cycling. And then uh, uh, a lot of like fishing. Like a fishing? Lot, a lot of fishing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, tuna season now, so it's quite good. Right, but you have that business now where you can, you know, you can just do, switch off, do the tuna fishing and... Not yeah, sure. not nothing about emails on the boat or anything. No, like no, that. no. Once, um, like, um, a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to take the week off, and everything's already been programmed, scheduled. I'll take a few phone calls from customers, but that's all been set up. I know it's just easy. It's just, just turn it off. It's good. Now, do you have any advice or for anyone thinking about maybe doing a gym's mining business? What, like, you've done a really extensive investigation process, and I'm glad yeah. you did because it means it's, the brand is what it is, and it's what yeah. we say it is. But do you have any advice for anyone who's thinking about maybe joining a gym's mining franchise or doing it? Um, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing um, is really just to understand what you want and what you want to achieve. Uh, I couldn't recommend high enough for guys to focus more from the bottom to the top, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can get lost in the moment by focusing on, on what you're going to turn over, or oh, how much am I going to get paid. And where a lot of guys get really, really confused, they go, oh, well, I'm getting paid this much a week. Yeah, but it's entirely different. When you work for a boss, you're paying all the income tax, you're paying this, it's a you got to work on the differences, the gap, not mm. actually the top line. It's the what the, the bottom line is, and that's why it's what your net is, and then build up from there. And you also said a couple of stuff at the start as well about accountability on yourself. Like even, yeah. even though you've worked for someone for so many years in a yeah. high role, you, you you've quickly mentioned straight away it's it's on me, it's on me, it's on me. Yeah. Do you think that where did you get that sort of thing from? Uh, well, we we were brought up pretty much um, when I went into the business, like like as as I got older and stuff, and more involved um, with family type stuff we had one motto, there's no degree of honesty. Mm. Um, so so the self-accountability comes very, very high then. So I, I run the business how I like to run it is that I even more or less like schedule in the maintenance is locked in every week, like every set date on the calendar. So if someone said, oh, you want to go out for breakfast tomorrow? Well, I don't. Mm. I say, yeah, I can go over the afternoon. I say, I've got to work in the morning. Now they go, oh, okay. Now, everyone's assumption that is work is that I'm going to do a custom, but that's generally might not be it. It might be the fact that I'm cleaning the truck or doing the equipment, service and changing blades. Mm. That, that's how I run it. Mm. So, because that's all part of it. It's a big part of it. So. Sure. So we'll leave it there because we've gone for a while. So thanks for doing this, John. No um, at all. Really appreciate coming in and letting us know and um, your credits to yourself. And thanks you for letting us know exactly what you do. Um, no all. Hopefully anyone watching is all jimsmining.com.au or 131. Five, four, six. If you want to come out and do a try day or do an extensive investigation period like yourself, yeah. it's one of the most extensive I've heard. So thank you very much, John, for coming out to do this. No worries. Thanks very much. Ta. Cheers.